This is a demonstration of the Doceri software system that I wrote on my iPad and it's going to show you a little bit about what symmetry is. I'm going to speed up the drawing a little bit. So what is symmetry? You might be asking and embedded inside my drawing here are lots of little symmetric pieces and I'm erasing, rewriting over what I did, a demonstration of Doceri software by Gwen Fisher. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is if you can find the line of symmetry of the mustache. And the answer is there's a vertical line right in the middle. Let's try the bow tie. And in this case, there's a vertical line of reflection and a horizontal line of reflection. So it has two different lines of reflection symmetry. Let's try the three-lobed flower. This one has three lines and you can see them. One, two, three there. And the five-pointed star has five lines, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm erasing everything but my mustache. And I'm going to ask you, what exactly is a reflection? So a point A is a reflection of a point B over a line L, if and only if L is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB. And what's great about this definition is that it actually tells us how to reflect points over lines. And so if we want to reflect the point B to the point A over the dotted line L, we simply draw in a line perpendicular to L through B that's the same distance. Uh, then we make A the same distance from the line as B is. And we can reflect up and over. And of course, we can also reflect in the other direction, going backwards. So here we can reflect the drawing over the dotted line to finish the hat. And I'm using the definition and drawing those little pink lines to help me figure out where some of the key points are, and I finish the hat. Now we're going to reflect the figure over the dotted line. So if I reflect a D, it becomes a B, and now we're going to reflect both figures over the second line. When we reflect down, we get a Q and a P. And something magical just happened. We noticed that figures one and three are rotations of each other. So even though we only did reflections, we in fact created a rotation. And it turns out that when two or more lines of reflection intersect, at some point, then rotations appear. And I like to think of it as mathematical. So let's look at the case where we have three lines. We're going to reflect the purple curve over the dotted lines, and we're going to make sure that we reflect our reflections as well. And when we do this, we see that we get these little heart drawings, and I colored them over in pink to make them look nice. And to me, the result looks like a three-leafed clover. So I'm drawing a little clover patch with my new little three-leaf clover design. Now here I'm making a table. So I have lines of reflection and then the picture that goes with it. So with one line of reflection, I get something that looks like a happy face. Um, I have two, three, and four, and of course I want to go back to zero. And then down at the bottom, I've drawn in the rotation symmetries that correspond with the number of lines of reflection. And this raises the question of whether you can draw a picture with rotation symmetry, but without reflection symmetry. And the answer is yes, you can. And here's a really easy example, a Z, and I've drawn in the center of rotation symmetry. Here's a more complicated one. Uh, here I drew in three dotted lines that were equally spaced around a point so that I had a scaffold to draw my picture over. A rotation symmetry is when an object can be rotated about a point by an angle and the object appears unchanged. So here I'm going to show you a little animation. I'm going to go and watch this thing actually rotate. Doo -doo. And there it's rotated 180 degrees. And I've indicated the center of rotation and I can go backwards if I want. And then forwards again. Now a different kind of symmetry is called translation symmetry and we can think about a row of houses. And in the pink, I've drawn the vector of translation symmetry, which shows how the houses repeat. 
The vector shows both the direction and the distance. And this is another vector of translation symmetry. And here's another one. And in fact, there's an infinite number of these, but all of the vectors are parallel to each other. When rotations or reflections are repeated in one direction, the seven border patterns, also called the seven freeze groups, are the result. And so here I'm going to draw a row of houses. And I notice that one house is a vertical line of reflection. But when we add the translation vector, the reflection lines repeat with each house. And then the mathematics happens. We see that new lines of reflection symmetry just appear. The simplest kind of symmetry is no symmetry at all, or what mathematicians like to call trivial symmetry, and that can be represented by something like a footprint you can make the simplest border pattern by hopping on a line on one foot. So here's my little drawing of footprints by hopping on one line, and I'm putting dots at both ends to show that it re repeats forever in both directions. The shortest vector of translation symmetry is drawn in by finding corresponding points on two adjacent motifs. And here are examples of the other five border patterns. So we have one with a vertical mirror reflection. This one has a glide reflection. This one I'm drawing now has all of the reflections. It's got the mirrors in both directions. This one has mirrors and a glide reflection. And the last one here has only rotation symmetry and translation symmetry. If we use two non-parallel translation vectors, we get 17 different wallpaper patterns. And here are just two of my favorites. So this one is based on a triangular grid. It has threefold centers of rotation symmetry. And in fact, it has them in two types. It has the ones where the yellow dots are, and then it also has centers now where the orange dots are. Um, oh, and it has a third one where the red dots are. And then this is one I like to think of as the basket weave kind of symmetry because it's the same symmetry that you get if you look at a plain weave of fabric. And I'm going to let this draw out for you. I think these pictures are a little mesmerizing to watch them paint themselves. Now, if you want to learn more about how I drew this, I use Doceri software, and you can visit our website at doceri.com. And if you want to learn more about art and symmetry, you can visit my website at beadinfinitum.com. Thank you.